Aloha and shalom, everybody. Just getting you set up here for the first quarter activation. We had the new moon last week, so that was a new beginning for us. And now we're one week into this new cycle. So what's going on? Now we're going to get a glimpse of what's behind the scenes, the energies that have been operating behind the scenes this past week and what they've brought us to here now. So I'm just going to start shuffling in a moment and let me know in the comments where you're tuning in from. Where in the world are you? As usual, I'm tuning in from the lovely Sedona, Arizona. Yay, good to see everybody. Awesome. For those of you who have never been to our activation portal before, welcome. We've been coming here for, I don't know, the last four years or whatever it is. <laughs> Every single week. The connection might be a little funny. I have, no, I have no explanation as to why the connection is being a little funny. I've never had that issue before here, so we'll just go with the flow and see how it goes. Cool. We got a few from AZ in the house tonight. Yay. We've got Canada in the house. We got Massachusetts in the house. So for those of you just uh, coming to, to the activation portal for your first time, welcome. For those of you who have been here before, welcome back. I love meeting here with you every single week. I so look forward to these activations just as much as you all do. And uh, while we're shuffling and everybody's tuning in, getting ready, stretch, get some water, be comfortable, make sure you're cozy. Go ahead and share the video while we're live with your friends or family who you think might enjoy this activation, might benefit from this message we're about to receive. Maybe you wanna share it with a favorite group that you're a part of on Facebook. Let's get them in live. And if you're watching this video as a recording, it's perfect. The truth that comes through the archetypes is timeless, universally applicable. So it doesn't matter what time it is, what the date is. Although the live is super fun, we're happy to have all beings in the portal whenever the right moment is for them to enter. Awesome, California in the house, Australia in the house. And remember, these cards are just different parts of the one self. So when we're shuffling them, we're just touching them, we're activating them, we're waking them up, we're saying hello to all the parts of the whole. That's all, that's all we're doing. And let me know, I see Luke was saying it's a little, the video's a little wonky. Yeah, I'm not sure, never have this issue, but I'm just gonna go with it. So <laughs> if it becomes totally uh, just terrible and you can't hear anything, please let me know. Now I'll go ahead and shuffle the Hebrew cards. And remember the Hebrew letters work the same way as the tarot, same way. They're just representing different parts of the same one self. That's all. And as you see everybody tuning in and letting us know where in the world they're tuning in from, remember, you can have an image in your mind's eye of the whole world, like as though you're looking at it from another planet in outer space. Just see the world, see the earth, and see every person else. Or like a, a light tower, like a light is being emitted from that place and shining through time and space. We're just lighting up the grid right now. We literally are doing that. So create a beautiful image of that in your imagination to really feel it. All right, so first quarter activation is all about we are one week into this cycle. What have we been experiencing? What has the lesson been about this week? What's the greatest challenge at this part of the process? It's getting wonky, y'all. Connection's in and out, but we're, we're still going. <laughs> I like what Cindy said, so I'm going to just say it out loud. I see myself with a string of lights strung to all of us, hand in hand. Beautiful. So what's the challenge? And thank you in advance to the archetype spaces of the one for the message about to come through. We are grateful.
the challenge of the week right now, starting with this first quarter, as we move deeper into this lesson, into this cycle. Something that we're all working on right now, I feel this really clearly, something that we're all working on, what's the foundation of this experience right now? What intention have we been carrying? And then for the Hebrew cards, I'm gonna go ahead and choose the ally. And thank you everybody for your directed energetic intentions to keep this stream flowing gracefully, despite the solar flares or you know, whatever <laughs> vibrations are interrupting. It's also beautiful. It's all beautiful. It's all perfect. So the ally of the week as we move through this part of the process has been chosen. Okay, beginning with the challenge of the week. Eight of swords. I feel like so much information just rushes in as I begin to tap into this particular archetype. Okay, so eight is right before nine. Nine is a completion within a cycle, right? And then the 10 is the complete ending and begin again. But this is eight, we're not yet at the ending. And this is, this card is representing where we feel stuck in a challenge. And remember, everybody is at a different place with this process, okay? So some of us may be experiencing it more on the challenging end and some more on the gift end because the challenge and the gift are one. So for those of us who are experiencing it as more of a challenge, you might feel stuck right now. You might feel like, I don't see a way out. I don't see how I'm going to solve this. I, don't, I can't even see a clear image of my future. I don't know how I'm going to get past this point. And then others may feel, I'm just starting to see the other side. I'm finally starting to see the solutions. And something that's coming through as I'm saying that is, many of us are feeling like we're just starting, we're just starting to receive the solutions, but we're still at a point of, it looks difficult. The road ahead looks difficult. It doesn't quite feel like it's gonna be easy yet. I don't, I haven't reached the point where I feel the lightness in this process. I'm, it's still feeling heavy. While I know what I need to do, I still don't necessarily feel the ultimate strength that I'm gonna need to get through this. And so we're all at a point where we're ready to open up to greater strength, greater power, to move through the challenging times we've been going through and see ourselves already on the other side. Some of you may have already begun to see yourself on the other side. But we're still in that space of having to do the work. All of us, all of us to some degree are still in this space of having to do the work to pull ourselves out of this one world into the new one. Okay, so again, for some of us, it might feel very heavy, like we're really still drowning in the old world. But deep inside, you know that it's only a matter of time before you have to move on because you know, you can sense, you can feel with your whole being that that world just isn't yours anymore. It's just not working anymore. And so it depends on how accepting we are to the degree to which we are accepting of it will be equal to the degree to which we will gracefully move forward. If you're resisting, if you know, and we all know that that old world has to go, but you're resisting it, if you're resisting it, you're conflicted and you're not allowing the process to carry you. But if instead you're more accepting instead of resisting, you're accepting that, yeah, this is definitely not for me. And what's more is you're not only accepting, but you're, you then can move toward excitement of, yeah, this, this is not for me, but not like, this is not for me. It's like, oh yeah, this is not for me. There must be something better because I trust, I trust. When you can get to that place, that's when things are gonna to start to speed up. That's when the grace is going to come in and carry you into the next stage of your life. I see for some people the video is freezing. I'm sorry if that's the case and I hope that, I trust that you'll receive this message however you're meant to receive it.
Even if I'm frozen on someone's screen right now, I know they're feeling this because whoever is receiving it is receiving it for the one which include, includes all. <laughs> That's a level of trust I have. Do you have that? Can we all get there? So don't forget to ask for the Alliance to come through and assist you. Don't forget to open up to the help. We so often as humans, all men and women think that we have to do it alone, but we're never alone, alone, all one. And remember the magician within, always, always, always with every magical practice, with every beginning to what you're wanting to manifest, you want to ask for the elementals to come through. Everything is made up of the elements. Even the archetypes can be summarized into the four worlds of creation, the four worlds of the elements. Everything is made up of earth, air, water, fire. So you're already complicating it if you're not for, and I always share, I always tell this to you, I'm sure you've heard me say this before, you're complicating it if you don't first start off by asking the elementals, the elements, hey, come together, please. Elements, I'm calling upon you, come together to fabricate, to materialize this new beginning for me. I'm ready to have you pull me out of this. You are me, I am you, let's do this together, we are one. You've got to know that you have the tools all around you to set yourself free. And there's nothing that can keep you trapped but yourself. You can get out. And if there's something you know you need to leave behind, even if it's something or someone, some project, some job, whatever, that you've been deeply invested in for years, I don't care how long. I'm not talking about time. They're not talking about time. We don't care about... Here we are. Time... I'm patient, I'll wait for this funkiness to pass. Time is irrelevant in the realm of archetypal wisdom. We don't care about time. I don't want your excuses. Oh, but we've been at this for so long. Oh, but we, it's, you know, we tried so hard. What I'm asking in this moment is what do you know in your heart is not working for you any longer? Especially if you feel resistance to walk away, ask yourself why? In fact, the relationship itself is all going to fade just like these bodies. What's most important is the self-reflection, the self-inquiry, the diving deep into the why. Do I feel what I feel? Why, why do I feel what I'm feeling right now? What can I learn about myself in that reflection? And what I make of that is the key. What I make of that will determine the amount of light that I, the amount of light that I will cultivate in this lifetime which will go on forever beyond this life in this body. So don't get so caught up in the, oh, feeling that's stuck, especially with our emotions, right? Don't get so caught up that you forget why we're even here, why all this is here. Remember what is temporary and what is everlasting. And the only thing that's everlasting is the light. So we're here to multiply that light. And I wanna remind you guys, and I talk about this in my book, the Royal Path. Specifically in the Royal Path too, it gets into the elements and you always want to consider the element that is pulled first. And then you want to look at the other ones. You don't want to just say, oh, well, we per pulled swords, so it's this element, so just look at that. No. That's the primary element. Oh Lord, patience. <laughs> so you first consider that element as the primary association, but then you want to ask about each of the other elements and ask how is this reflecting in the other dimensions because as in one, so in all. So feeling stuck in the challenge, how does that reflect emotionally? Because I'm seeing this is a big part of it. When we feel stuck, our emotions feel stuck. It's like stagnant water. We need it to flow. And remember, you are water. So like I said a moment ago, if you want to call upon the elements to help you, just ask the water and know that you are the water. Know that you're mostly made up of water and ask the waters to flow on, keep it moving like a river. Stagnant water brings disease. Keep it moving, ask your waters to move, ask the waters of life to carry you. There's water in all things, even though you can't see the water around you, it's in the air. Ask it to move, ask all the water within and without to carry you forward. That is a very powerful thing. It's not just a simple, you know, oh, I'm gonna tune into the water. No, you're, you are the water. We forget to just ask and we think, 
oh, well, my, my anxiety, my thoughts of anxiety, is, is, they're so much more sophisticated than my positive thoughts. My positive thoughts are just woo-woo BS. <laughs> I want to stick with my anxiety because it's more intellectual. This is ridiculous. Get simple. Simplify and ask the water. It will no doubt help you so much more than your anxiety ever could. So remember, when you're feeling stuck, right? These are the swords. It's a challenge feeling stuck. That means our mind starts to feel stuck, right? Because I teach that swords is the material realm. <laughs> well, it I'm just going to move a little bit and see if that helps at all. So while in most, I'm just going to sit in this comfy chair right here. While in most modern tarot decks, modern tarot teachings, you'll be taught that the swords is a suit of air. I teach otherwise, and it's all in my book. I won't go too deep into that, but if you want to know more, it's in Royal Path 2. Ask me about it. So we first consider it in the material realm, earthly realm. It's a challenge, very real challenge, physical material challenge. But then we want to see how that affects us mentally emotionally and spiritually, the other suits, okay? The pentacles, the cups, the wands, they're all within each one. You just first look at the swords, then you look at the others. That's the trick to going deep with your tarot practice and getting the full answer to your questions, not just skimming the surface. Okay, so if we're feeling stuck in life, you can bet your ass you're feeling stuck in your mind, you're feeling stuck with your emotions, your spirit feels stuck, I can't grow. Doesn't that make sense? Of course, if you're feeling stuck in one dimension, you're feeling stuck in all dimensions. So ask, ask fire to light up that inner flame so that you can progress. Ask the waters to move your emotions along so that you can heal. Ask the air to come in and carry you the winds of change to move you forward with grace. Maybe not like a tornado, maybe more like a gentle breeze. <laughs> okay so this is the challenge this week how can we get unstuck and again some of us are going to feel stuck in a way where it's painful like the walls are closing in no you will get through and then others are going to feel like I'm, i've been a little stuck but i'm i'm getting through i'm on my way and i trust that i know that so we're all at a different level with this and if you feel like you're already in that process of getting unstuck how can you surrender more with more grace, with more openness. How can you call upon the elements? Not Maybe you already feel unstuck. So for some of us, it's asking the elements to help us get free. And for some of us, it's about asking the elements to help us see where we can be more free, where we can let go more, where we can assist them. We ask, we, at first, we ask the elements to assist us right? But we're, we're all one. We ask the elements to assist us. And then you take it to the next level by assisting the elements, assisting you. This is an elaboration of the concept. God helps those who help themselves. God is one. God is all. All is one. So we ask the elements to help us. And then as they carry us, we go, oh, I can help you help me. And that's how we go deeper with the process. Okay. I'm just going to stay here in this spot because it seems to be a sweet spot. So let's see uh, the foundation for why we're going through this. Eee! And the Page of Wands came up last week in our activation for the new moon. Do you remember? And the Page of Wands, pages are the youthful aspect of each of the suits. They're the ones who are alive and free and open and inspired. And he's the one that is... The part of us that acts on new spiritual inspiration, new passion, that flame within is lit and I'm going to act on it. I'm going to receive that inspiration and I'm going to do something with it. I'm going to be so inspired. I'm going to feel like a little ball of fire ready to go. Okay, so this is the foundation for why we're going through the, the unstuck. We need to reach a new level of inspiration. We're ready to grow on our path. We're ready to grow, expand psychologically and spiritually, get to the next level. And if we don't, let me pull this card. I'm here again. If we don't do what the heck we need to do to get ourselves unstuck, if we don't open up to the process of moving forward, setting ourselves free, letting go of that thing, that person, that idea, that belief, 
so that we can once and for all be free. We're not gonna activate this to the level that we have the potential to right now. You see, we have, a, all of us, we have a great potential right now to reach that new level of inspiration. It's right there beyond your fear. It's right there beyond your discomfort. Okay, so for some of us, let's pick a common issue, right? Let's say addiction, whether that's drugs, alcohol, food, okay? Or like relationships, codependency issues, right? We all have all these things. If we don't once and for all just love ourselves and love our bodies, love who we are naturally without the, the need to keep shoving food down our throats, without the need to drink alcohol, take drugs, whatever. If we don't just start loving ourselves, then we can't reach that next level. We can't reach that next level of inspiration in this life on our path. Because you have to love yourself so deeply to be able to reach those levels of inspiration, of true, deep inspiration. Okay, maybe about some new scenery. Let's go to this chair. This is a fun activation. <laughs> so we have to love ourselves truly so deeply if we want to reach those deep levels of inspiration, right? The degree to which you love yourself is the degree to which that door will open up for you. The more you love yourself, the greater the opportunities will be for you to keep reaching new levels of self-love. But if you can't even get to that place of self-love and you're keeping yourself trapped, yes, you're keeping yourself trapped because there's only one here. We do it to ourselves. Ooh, this is a rocking chair. This is good. So whatever you're choosing to think, say, and do that's keeping you stuck, just know that every moment that you make that choice in thought, speech, and action, you're choosing to open that door of your potential so ever so slowly. Instead, you could bust it open if you only just gave up the BS, if you just gave up those things that are keeping you stuck. Sorry, am I making you motion sick? Let me just pause for a moment. So when we're ready to let go of those things that have been holding us back, when we're ready to cut off all of our hair after it was down to your knees, When you're ready to let go of whatever it was that was taking up space, weighing you down. I'm a good metaphor for this. Yeah. When you're ready to just free yourself, you know, whatever that looks like. Ah, for you. Then you'll grow. But you got to be willing to let go to grow. Get unstuck. You're not stuck, babe. You can set yourself free. You can make that decision. You can walk away from that thing that, that is not serving you. You can walk away from that bad habit. You can walk away from that relationship. You can walk away from that job. I know you can. And you can do it giggling all the way. I didn't cry. I laughed and I said, hurry up. I'm ready for my inspiration. Hurry up. <laughs> I said... Hurry up. I want to be unstuck now because I really want to reach that new level of inspiration. And I found it. And there's always deeper to go. Okay, I'm back to this chair. Let's see how this works out. And the ally of the week. Okay, so, so just to sum it up before we go, we're going through this challenge to get ourselves unstuck so that we can find new, powerful, profound inspiration at this time when we're so supported. Go back to this chair, musical chairs. The ally is the Lamed. And the Lamed is right in the middle of the Aleph Bet, and it's the tallest letter. It reaches above the rest. And the Lamed represents the heart, connects to the heart. It's, it's the teacher. It's the most high. Because the heart is love, is light, is truth, everlasting. It's the heart. The Lamed is also like the, the, the energy of the shepherd. We good? <laughs> Let's go over here now, guys. Okay, so the Lamed is like the shepherd leading the way. Think of it like your heart is the shepherd. It's leading the way. It's guiding the way. It's the teacher. So how can your heart... How? We already know. The heart does everything. It's just how it is. It's the answer to everything. 
But how can you, you allow your heart to open and guide you to a better future, to this next stage? How can you see your heart, like see your heart beating faster, stronger, growing and glowing till it emits a light. And by the way, the, the light is already emitting far beyond the, the, the small space you're in right now. The heart radiates an energy so powerful. But how can you tune into that knowing that this is what the heart's doing every moment and with your awareness, send energy there to make it more powerful, to multiply that light? How can you Im Im use your imagination, which is your greatest power? Einstein said imagination is far more power than intelligence. Of course, everything is mind. But the higher mind, which is the visionary mind, not the rational mind. So how can you use that power of your imagination to tune into your heart, to see it, growing and glowing outside of your chest, emitting a light so profound, so beautiful, so luminous. And then lasso that heart and see it pull you toward the next stage of your life, pulling you out of the darkness. I mean, and you can really do this, have fun with it, meditate. Imagine you're sitting in the dark and your heart is a light that grows and glows out of your chest till it's speeding off into the future of your new beginning and you just hold on tight and let it carry you out of the darkness into a beautiful, brilliant light. And you can do just that, just that simple one meditation I just described, just that, if you did that every day, especially at the most important times when your brain waves are producing such a receptivity as when you wake up and when you go to sleep or when you're relaxed. If you did this every day, see that light growing, glowing, running into the future of your new beginning and you just following it, holding on tightly until it pulls you out of the dark into the light. And I'm saying you could literally see dark blackness and into maybe a pink light, pink light, you know, for loving, whatever, loving energy, healing energy. Maybe it's yellow, maybe it's blue, whatever it is for you, do what you got to do. And do this visual meditation every day. And when you find your mind going to, but how am I gonna get out of this? I don't know where I'm going. When you find your mind doing all these things, no, go right back to this visual meditation and be diligent, really watch yourself and keep coming back to that and watch where it takes you. It's so powerful. How could it be wrong to do that instead of sitting in your anxiety? Is your anxiety going to get you anywhere? Is it going to take you anywhere? Is it gonna take you out of the darkness? No, it's gonna keep you stuck. It's gonna keep you stuck just like the Eight of Swords. So instead, choose a new visual meditation. See yourself coming out of the darkness. Work in a way, with, work with your imagination in a way that can bypass the ego's desire to sabotage your process. Keep it simple. Use colors. Use feelings. Try to keep it simple so that you don't overcomplicate it. When you overcomplicate it and you make the vision too complex, what happens is your subconscious mind makes too many associations with past experiences and it gets really muddy. So keep it simple and stick to that. Okay, and the Lama is the heart. It's the ally this week. It's the one that guides the way. Okay, and you can also think of it as the sacrificial heart. The Lama is connected to the martyr aka the hanged man in the tarot so it's the one that gives up sacrifices whatever it needs to to move from the 12 to the 13 death rebirth transformation okay we have lamed then mem we have the hanged man and then death hanged man or the martyr then rebirth so what do you need to give up right now? What do you need to sacrifice right now to move to that? And just a fun fact, I give a Kabbalistic interpretation of the Torah story every week live on Shabbat in my private Facebook group called Shabbat Crew. And I did it there this past Shabbat. And it, the Torah story for this week is Terumah. It's also on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Rebecca Magic. It's also on Instagram, Rebecca Magic. Terumah is the name of this week's Torah story. And it's all about building the tabernacle. And Terma is, it's a sacrifice or an offering or a gift. But the deeper meaning, because Hebrew is multidimensional, the deeper meaning of this word is to separate or elevate. 
Because when we give something up, we, we separate from that thing. We are elevated. It's a sacrifice to, to make holy. Okay, so this is the energy that we're in right now and everything is pointing to this truth that it's time to make the sacrifices so that we can build the tabernacle, build the new temple that is you. And what was instructed first of the, uh, the children of Israel, what was instructed when they were given these blueprints, right? Because Terumah gives you the exact blueprints for the tabernacle. The first thing they were instructed to build was the Ark for the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant, the, the, the vessel for the heart. The heart was the first thing that was created. The heart and the protector of the heart and then the temple around it. So the heart, there you go. It's perfect. It's all perfect. Okay, let me pick up those cards. So it's saying, where are you stuck and what do you need to give up to become unstuck so that you become newly inspired again? The heart will show the way. The heart is first. If your heart's not in it, you're not going to go anywhere. The heart has to be in it first. Your heart knows the truth. Who is it, your, your heart or your head, that wants to stay stuck? Let your heart guide you. All right. <laughs> and I hope that this inspires you as I went from hair down to my knees to nothing and I feel so good get my little special spot <laughs> so I look forward to hearing about your journeys and seeing seeing your transformations please feel free to join us in my private group the royal path that's where I'd love 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 to hear your stories because that's really a special space that I created to be able to share personal stories like this. So please join us in that private group, The Royal Path, so that we can discuss in between activations where we're at and how we're receiving these insights, what we're doing with them. That group is so powerful. There's so many beautiful beings in there. And when we share, we go deeper. And we get new insights from reflecting with each other because we are each other because we're one. So this week, I encourage you, go ahead, join our private group, Royal Path on Facebook. It's on my page, Royal Path Tarot. You can find the group on there, uh, right here where I'm going live right now. And share, what do you feel you need to sacrifice? Maybe you're struggling. Reach out for help. Ask us. Hey, guys, I'm really struggling with letting go of this thing. What do you think? What do you feel? Share with us what cards you pull for yourself. Share with us what comes up for you. Let's help each other move through this week. Let's see each other transforming from the caterpillar to the butterfly, letting go of that old life, really trusting that something better is awaiting. And it's right there at our doorstep, right here, now. I know you're strong. I know you can and you will do it. You will get unstuck. And I'm here to remind you, you don't need to waste any more time. Time isn't real anyway. You can take as long as you want and suffer but I'm here to tell you that you have right here, right now, everything you need within you to move forward and let go and find that passion again for life in a whole new way, a greater passion than you've ever felt before. So let your heart gu guide you. Let the Lamed guide you. Let the teacher within your heart guide the way. Make the sacrifices you need to make. It will be so worth it. You cannot even imagine in this moment how good it's going to be. So blessings on your journey ahead. I shipped out a bunch of books to you guys this week, and I'm really looking forward to hearing the reviews. Thank you so much for everybody who's been reviewing the books and sharing with me how they've helped you. I really look forward to these new ones and just continuing to write and share all that I've been learning. So I just really love being on this journey with you guys. It's been awesome. <laughs> all righty, you guys. Have an awesome week. Join the group. Let us know what you think about this message. Let us know how you integrate it throughout the days ahead. And just know we're all right there with you doing it all together. And happy birthday to all the wacky Aquarians out there. I love you. Shalom.